The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the February 2nd, the, um, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, well, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Mixed bag out there as we begin our morning together. you got the Dow up 37 points with the S&P up 32 points. You've got the Nasdaq up 200 points and the Russell's down 18. The semis are up 17. Trendy's up 53. New York Stock Exchange down 57. Gold's trading out of 2052. That's off 18 bucks. Silver's trading down 52 pennies. That's trading at 22.71. Lights we crude 72.23 off a buck 59. Natural gas up two cents. Trading out of 207. A 30 year treasury. Having a tough day. Down two points and nine ticks right now. Trading out trade down at 121.23. So where and leading the charge, let's take a look at what's leading the charge the upside because we got some super leaders out here. 13% move for Deckers Outdoor, 106 points. Facebook Meta up 82 bucks, 20%. Saya Inc. The Afraid Company, 9%. Granger WW, 4%, 38 bucks. NVIDIA up 21 bucks. To the downside, we've got some shakers. 55 bucks or 14% for Charter Communications. Altassian Corp down 31 bucks, 12%. Ferrari, 15 bucks, 4%. Exponent, 13 bucks, 15%. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. But let's begin our day taking a look at really what we want to focus in on with regard to the equity futures. And that's the following. Number one. We still have tops in place. You got an ES mini, Rhodes Minton indicator top. It gets negated if we see a close day above 4957.25. We're trading right now in that range. The NQ still has its Rhodes Minton indicator top, only gets negated with a close above 17793. Right now we have price just testing profile resistance. The Dow has a Rhodes Minton indicator top. That would only be negated with a close above 38720 out there. And the Russell 2000, that had it top quite a while ago. It is pulling back. It did take out intraday-wise yesterday's high, but it has not taken out yesterday's low. So that's kind of interesting out there. So, uh, But I guess I would leave you with this thought process. If I could leave you with any thought process. You got tops in all four of the equity future contracts out there. So let's go see what that really means. We're going to switch panels here. When I say, what does that really mean? Well, we don't want to just pin our hopes or our thoughts only on one time frame chart. We need to know what's going on up above us, what's going on below us. So if we take a look at what's going on above us, and what I mean by that, excuse me, I might sneeze, try to hold it off. <laughs> I lost that one. Sorry about that. We need a little sneeze button so you don't hear that nasty sound. In any event, uh, here we're taking a look at, again, they got the four equity future contracts, a daily time frame up on the top row, but it's the bottom row that you and I want to focus in. In on. So the daily time frame 
has all those topping patterns. We don't have to re-review them. On a weekly time frame, we don't have anything of the such. And that's not even good grammar out there. If you take a look at the ES Mini, we're trading above last week's high. That is a bullish signal. If you take a look at the NQ, no topping pattern, price above its oscillator and change line, above the top of its profile. It's in a breakout bullish mode out there. The Dow, it's the same thing. The Dow is negated. It's TD9 count top out here. It's in a bullish mode. The Russell 2000 has found support at that green oscillator and change line out there so that too was bullish so when we take a look at the weekly time frame charts they're all very bullish and they're wondering what the sam heck the daily time frame charts are doing well we know we've got those daily tops out there and so in the es mini if we see a close above 49.57 in the quarter uh, it's going to be tough to say that uh, somebody should be short out there. And if you take the NQ and you close above 17,793.50, you get the same message. In the Dow, it would be a close above 38,720. That would be the message to say, hey, don't be short the Dow. No, I would suggest not shorting the Dow anyways because that's really where that global flow of capital is uh, headed to. So that's an overview of the daily and weekly equity future contracts. Let's not stop there. Let's go take a look and dive down into the intraday charts and see if there's any kind of signals here. So let's begin by taking a look at the ES Mini. And when we take a look at the ES Mini, we can see we're up towards these highs. If you look at a top row of charts, the five hour, the four hour, you can see prices up at a TD9 count breakdown resistance level. So this is an area where it has struggled. The 60 minute chart generated a road momentum indicator top. Uh, that's likely going to get tested because we can see that prices above profile and prices above a green oscillator and change on. That's a lower left hand screen uh, chart that we're taking a look at out here. Uh, you've got a on a 10 minute base, you have a TD9 count top that gets negated with a 10 minute close above 49.61. But there's still resistance not too much further up above that at 49.64 out there. So, from an intraday standpoint, what do we see here? To me, it looks like there's a little bit more rally left out here, at least as at least those highs uh, get tested out there. And it's the one that you're watching right now. On a 60-minute basis, it would be that 49.64 level. Close above that on an hourly chart would negate the um, would negate the uh, its road momentum indicator top out there. Um, yeah, I don't know who's short what or anything like that. No spin. What I'm saying in what I'm sharing with you is that what we're seeing here. That's going on inside the market. You and I, we've all taken a look at that. Let me switch back to some other screens out here. Is that we have globe, we have capital that is concentrating in the United States. It is concentrating here. That's uh, really what yesterday's action, uh, that's part of what yesterday's action was all about. If we just simply go back here, we take a look at equity futures, go back to, to here we take a look at the, the equity futures. Here's the ES Mini. We're at a new all-time high today, right now in euros out there. So what I can share with you here, um, uh, no spin, is that, that this is a global market rally. If you take a look in pounds, ES Mini, you're at a new all-time high. In yen, you're at a new all-time high. In uh, For the NQ, you're at a new all-time high in euros. You're at a new all-time high in uh, British pounds, and you're also at a new all-time high in yen. In the Dow, you're at a new all-time high in yen. Uh, your Dow, your new all-time high in British pounds. You're at a new all-time high in euros inside the Dow. Now we're not inside. Not, we're not there in in the U.S. dollars. We haven't taken out the all-time high yet inside the Dow Equity Future Contract or the NQ. So this is the point. The point is this is global capital concentrated in the U.S. And what global capital needs is liquidity. And where it gets that liquidity no spin is the Dow is in large cap mega stocks out there. And that's why I said what I said out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, let's go start taking a look at a couple of requests. We only have three. I would love more. So feel free to either give us a call at 877-927-6648 or go ahead and uh, uh, send me on email, steve at tfn.com. And, of course, inside the Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's uh, take a look at uh, Peter uh, from Park City. Would like to take a look at the uh, currencies. Uh, his observation, well, well observed, is that the U.S. dollar looks like it wants to head higher. So... Uh, the daily chart. Now, what I've got up here is the, the upper left-hand chart is a daily chart for the current contract. The other symbols that I have out there are a synthetic version of the U.S. dollar index that allowed me to stitch together those contracts in a better way than the continuous contract to give some profiles that it calculates. A profile that I would have for the uh, weekly time frame chart for um, a March contracts are going to have different profile levels. But I want to focus on that upper right-hand chart uh, for the moment, Peter. And we can see here the U.S. dollar is, is, is trading between a nice rising uh, trend line and a nice descending trend line. We're in the cone of silence, so to speak. And although price is rising, I absolutely agree with you out here. What we can see on the weekly time frame chart is that price is running into a level of resistance, which is the bottom of its weekly profiles is calculated using that stitched together set of contracts out there. And that's at about the 103.60 area. We're trading right now at 103.70. So that's the first element that we want to take a look at with regard to the U.S. dollar index. Three of the currency pairs that make up the U.S. dollar index represent 83.1 percent. That's the euro, the yen, and the pound. And that's why I just really focus in on those to provide us with a clue as to what is going on. So let's take a look at the euro. Yesterday, what it's possible that we are going to have a wave seven bottom inside the euro. That's if we don't take out yesterday's low, one pip below yesterday's low. So far, we have not had that happen. The, the more important or another important element of that euro chart here, Peter, and everybody should be paying attention to this, is take a look at how that 
I'll use a, a, a term from Basil. Look how that has walked the oscillator and change line, both to the upside here on a weekly basis and, well, now to the downside. It's truly acting as a very key level of resistance. So, Peter, if we ever get a close above that in the euro on a daily time frame, I would have to say that's going to be a suggestion that the euro wants to get stronger and the U.S. dollar would get weaker. But right now, we've had a nice strengthening U.S. dollar, but we may have a bottom pattern here by day's end. There is an A to B equals CD pattern. That would take us down to about 107 37, we haven't gotten down there. I would say if we tick below yesterday's low, that wave seven pattern goes away. And that's a pattern that would be in play out there. That is supported, Peter, by the weekly chart. The weekly chart has given up its oscillator and change line. Looks like this is going to be two weeks below that. It has really lost its momentum. So, you know, I, I wait for the proof in the pudding here, but it looks to me like what the euro has communicated to you and I is it wants to head lower. We'll go look at the euro chart, see what else we can find out there. That will certainly put pressure on the U.S. dollar index moving higher. Now, the, the U.S. dollar Japanese yen really took off this morning. What it really needs to do is close above the 148.83 level. That's a TD nine count breakdown area, and we've seen that that is held as resistance. Price is likely going to go target that. Why? Because right now it's trading above its green oscillator and chain line. A rising price oscillator above zero is a bullish condition. So therefore, it should have the strength to get up to that 148 level. And this chart here, as the yen is rising, it is getting weaker. The U.S. dollar index is getting stronger. Now, so Peter, if the yen were to ever take out 148.83, a key level of resistance will have failed. And that would suggest that the U.S. dollar index will continue to strengthen. We take a look at the Great British Pound. It, too, on a daily basis is struggling with that little booger, and that little booger being that oscillator and change line out there. But it has just been a sideways move inside the Great British Pound out there. So I don't know that there's anything that's really going to change that. It is a 12% weighting. Price right now is testing its weekly oscillator and change line. If that were to fail at day's end, uh, then maybe that's signaling that it wants to go ahead and weaken. And if it does that, then the U.S. dollar index is going to get higher. So we've got price hitting a level of resistance on the uh, daily U on the weekly US dollar index chart out here at these currency fairs that we really want to be paying attention to. Uh, let's take a look at the euro since that's got the 57% weighting inside the US dollar index. See if there's anything special there that Peter and I can uh, pick up and share with you. Of course, it would be helpful if Stevie could actually get to that chart or set of charts. Here we go. So you got the monthly chart upper left hand side. So what that says to us, Peter, is if the euro continues to weaken, that its price target would be that oscillator and change line currently printed at 1.066. Nine. Uh, the weekly time frame chart we've already covered. The daily chart we've already covered. The 30 minute time frame does not have a bottom pattern. The 60 minute time frame price got back to that breakout level. That's an important area. We see that that has held this support. That's at 1.079. If you're an intraday trader, that's a level most certainly be paying attention to. I would say if price closes below that, the euro continues its move lower out there. That's the key level of support that I see when I take a look at all of the intraday time frame charts for the euro. So, Peter, did that answer or provide you with the information you were looking for. I hope that it did. But if not, you write back and we'll make sure that we get it for you. So let me close out these charts and go to the other two requests that we have out here. Kind of a quiet morning. But Stevie will just, uh, he'll figure out what to do. Um, uh, so let's go take a look. Oh, how did I get that chart back? I must have uh, got it back because it went to where it was supposed to go. Uh, that's not what we're going to look at. We've already looked at these charts. I'm just trying to close them down because I have a number of things that are open, and I don't like a slow system out there. Of course, you're saying, well, gee, Stevie, you're being pretty slow in trying to get to those charts for nail for Jambalaya, and I would have to say I'd absolutely have to agree with you. But I'm going to get there. You'll see this. We're there right now. So, nail, what do we see here on a daily time frame? Well, I don't even know what nail is. Not that I need to know what nail is, but I I think it's an ETF out there. I'm going to go with nail is some type of builder ETF out there. Um, so or something that has to do with the housing market. So you got a nice Rhodes Momentum indicator top that uh, went ahead and confirmed on the trading day. This is about a week ago on uh, January the uh, 23rd. So more than a week ago, just a little over a week ago. And now what we have is we've got a new pro of that form that was forming back on January 26th and price is just consolidating with inside it. It's bullish in structure jam. And that says that it's got a very strong buy zone and the buy zone is 96.33 to 101 even Steven. What did price do to 
today it pulled back and it tested that buy zone at the 101 level. Now, what it needs to also do, now maybe it can't bust to the downside, can it bust it to the upside? In order to bust it to the upside, you would need to see it close above its oscillator and change line. So that's the next resistance level on any rally inside of NAO, 108.59. That number 59 is going to change a little bit as price moves up or down. If price can overtake that, then price should go target 112.69. So you've got a Rogemont indicator top, and right now we'll just simply call it a sideways consolidation out there. And you can clearly see that sideways consolidation that began with the gap out here that uh, took place on December the 14th. If we take a look at a weekly time frame chart, what do we have here? Well, it's possible. I don't know if it has done it. I'll just simply draw it in. It's possible that it completed an A to B equals CD pattern. I just can't visually tell if it really did or it didn't. So we're going to draw the A to B line. We're going to take that over to the uh, C point out here. We're going to move this off to the side just to try to figure out. Yep, so it made. So what do you have last week is a sell the D point pattern. But what price did, Jam, is it found support at that green oscillator and change line. So even though we have a sell signal, an absolute sell signal, Right now what we have is we have a neutral signal on the weekly time frame. We'll finish taking a look at NAIL. We get back to this break. Of course, I'd love to hear from you as well, folks. 877-927-6648 or send me an email. Steve, tfnn.com. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, 
go, folks. Uh, so I'm taking a look at here at Nail. I'm looking at the uh, monthly time frame chart we're trading inside. It's a swing point. Uh, from back in December of 2021, as long as price remains in there on a monthly basis, uh, this wants to uh, move higher. So you got a neutral signal on the weekly. Monthly says I want to move higher. Daily is a consolidation pattern out there. It's just a consolidation, not much more than that, Jam. I hope that that helps you out. John C. writes in, wants to take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, uh, wants to take a look at the Rogemontum indicator top that is present. So let's go over to that chart. We take a look at the NYSE. Let's try to get that chart up here. When it bottomed, so we'll just reminisce just a bit. Back on October 27th, it was bar number eight. It had a Rose Mentum indicator signal and a wave number seven bottom pattern out there. The very next day, you get the uh, bullish piercing candle. Also, it was bar number nine to confirm a TD9 count, but it also confirmed a Rose Mentum indicator bottom. Now, that wasn't John's question, but Stevie just felt like a little reminiscing. Why? Well, just take a look at the pattern that we've got right now. The only thing missing is that wave number seven top. But we've got a TD9 count top that will complete today. So the NYSE is going to absolutely give us a topping pattern out here. Uh, it already has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Jam, um, that was from John out there. So that was confirmed with the bearish reversal candle, the bearish engulfing candle on January 31st. So only a high above at this stage here, only a close above. Now, here's the issue with the New York Stock Exchange. I would, I would say, but I can't say, but I will say, I hope I confused you. That's not what I was going to say. What I was going to say is if we get a close above the high from the 31st, that's at 17.12320, that will negate the Rhodes Mentum Indicator top. But it doesn't mean we don't have a top because today would complete a TD9 count top because that high can come after bar number nine. So now that I totally and thoroughly have confused you, I think the answer to my your question was, am I showing the same thing that you're looking at? And the answer to that question is absolutely. And today's candle doesn't really matter. The New York Stock Exchange is going to have a top today no matter what. Now, if the New York Stock Exchange can close below its uh, oscillator and change line, it's printing just below that right now. That's at 17067. That'll tell us it's lost its momentum. And then its price target, or at least an initial price target on a downside move, should that unfold, would be at 16729 So New York Stock Exchange has a top. As long as we're in Stevie's index section out here, let's go take a look at the other cash indices and see what they have. Turns out in the Dow, you've got a TD9 count, Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. The S&P 500, you've got a TD9 count and Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. Of course, that's going to be negated with a close above 49 3109. We're certainly trading above that right now. The NDX 100 has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. If price were to close above its green oscillator and change line, that says we go back to those highs. That oscillator and change line is 17,535. Russell not providing us with any information. The semis certainly have a, a top out here. We're trading above yesterday's high, never got down to yesterday's low. That's a bullish signal out there. The Dow transports have a three drive to a top pattern in place out there. The NASDAQ composite has a, a TD9 count uh, top and Rhodes Mintum indicator top. We've already covered the New York Stock Exchange. So most of the U.S. indices do have tops, but of course, a couple of those could get negated today. It depends on the close. So, John, I hope that gave you the information you were looking for, and thank you so much for the request. Quest. Dan inside the T T T T Tiger's Den. He's a real team player because he wants to go take a look at ticker symbol T E A M. So let's get over and see what the team is doing here. Give me a moment. That's not the set of charts we wanted. We wanted to take a look at T E A M, and that should be. I'm hoping that is right here. That is. So now if we take a look at Team. Team had a TD9 count top, but you probably knew that. It had a Rose Mentum indicator top. And now today, price gaps down, probably an earnings uh, beat or something, or not a beat. Uh, who knows what, they, what the reason is. We don't need to know what the reason is. What price did was it's now trading below its breakout level of support at 23, 238. It's trading below uh, profile support at 236.35. So this is suggesting to you and I, price wants to make a run for 193.02. Now, um, Price is holding a swing point. That's a swing point from January 4th. That only had 1.3 million shares. Team has already done 3.7 million shares. So let's look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart shows a TD9 count top out there. That TD9 count top is now taking price below its oscillator and change line. A close below 227.73 or thereabouts would be a signal that price should move lower. Its price target would be between 195.85 and 203.30. What you should notice on the weekly time frame chart for T 
team, uh, Dan, is that that is a bearish structured weekly profile. Price has been above it for well more than uh, two sessions out there. If it's only a counter trend move to the downside, that is the area where price would find support. Meaning on a weekly basis, if price were to close below 195.85, that would tell you that the move lower is something other than a counter trend move. Doesn't mean it can't find support because at some point in time it will find support. Um, let's not go into where that next support level on the weekly basis because we're fairly far away from that at this stage of the game. On a monthly time frame, team looks like it negated it. Well, let's just make sure. The high from the December of 2023 was 248 even Steven. The close in January was 249.77. Team has negated the uh, TD9 count top. In the monthly time frame chart, it is telling you and I that over time this wants to trade higher. But right now it's got to deal with the daily and the weekly disappointments out there. So what I'm going to say with regard to team is that this wants to head lower out there. And that head lower is anywhere between 193 and 20330. Now, let's go take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart because we have had a nice bounce out there. Let's see if there's some kind of signal associated with that. Uh, at least on a 30-minute time frame chart. And the answer to that question is, no, there is not. So I don't have any kind of bottom pattern that's showing up there. Just uh, quickly, I believe people are trying to trade this intraday. On an intraday standpoint, price is on 30-minute basis. The sell zone, because it's a bearish structured 30-minute profile, is between 224 and 229. Let's look at a 15-minute time frame chart, see if there's any piece of information, any morsels out here, tender morsels. No, there's not anything other than this is a bullish structured profile. you got to love it. The 15 minutes got a bullish structure. The 30 minute at a bearish structure, I believe. Here it says price could get up to 229.26. We go back to that 30 minutes. So 229.26 is the 15 minute. 30 minute. Yeah, 229.26, but you got to get above that 224.71 level out there. But that would be the safer spot if you're looking to try to take a short inside this uh, team ETF out there, which is a home builder, ET builder supply, something along those uh, out there. So I hope that that provided with the information that you were looking for. And uh, as always, uh, thank you so much for that request. Now. Are there any other? Oh, there was somebody put in a request to go take a little sweet crude. So let me go. And I don't. I didn't write down who wanted it. It doesn't matter. I do like to recognize that individual, whoever that is. So I'll just have to say thank you. And maybe I can get my eyeballs on that spot on the uh, den area and see. But let's go take a light sweet crude. See what it's doing out here. Let's look at the daily time frame chart. Let's start with the daily. The daily shows a TD nine count top. That's in place out there. And now price is trading below the bottom of its bullish structured daily profile. As you look at my charts, each of you that, and I'll just, I'll expand out the chart, make sure that we're all doing the same thing. Where do you believe, where is it that you believe that a lights recruit is going to go target? To the downside, where is it that lights recruit would target? Because if you can read my charts, and that's really what I'd love to teach you how to read my charts, then you can answer the question. And the question is, where is Light Sweet Crude headed? A close today below 73.23 increases the odd of a move to 70.62. That's where price broke out from using that TD9 count system. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We got a caller on the line, so we have call ahead seating. Let's go out to uh, Miami and speak with. Is it Lori? Yes, um, I'd love you to analyze CRISPR, C R S P, if you'd be so kind. Absolutely. What are you doing with it? Are you long, short? I'm wondering whether or not to sell it. I, um, a family member of mine, bought it at seventy one thirty four, and it seems mm. that it's got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. So here's what here's what I want to first share with you are levels of support. If levels of support get broken, you know, then you might want to consider selling it. What I see on a daily time frame is I see a consolidation right now, Lori, between profile levels. So your support area on a daily time frame is 6033. And the resistance level is at 6542. And we can see that this has really been consolidating sideways since about uh, December the 19th. So in consolidation patterns can be quite frustrating out there. Uh, but that's what you've got in play on a daily time frame. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, price is trading above. So it depends on your time frame, your time frame horizon when you entered that trade. But in this case here, on a weekly basis, we can see that price is also consolidating with inside its profile files that gives you a support area price right now is actually trading on a weekly basis in that support area and that support zone is between 5726 and 6514 if price were to close above 6514 on a weekly time frame that would increase the odds that it wants to make a move to the 7697 level of course that would be a better place for you to go ahead and exit uh, something that you got for 71 dollars on a monthly time frame, you also have a good old-fashioned consolidation. I know you've heard that three times at least from me now, but that's what the patterns are showing us when we look at the daily, the weekly, and the monthly time frame chart. And its levels of support are between 43.74 and 48.54, and only a close below 43.74 would you consider trading. Now, I don't know that you want to take that type of a hit from 71 to 40, but I'm just sharing with you what the charts are communicating. The resistance level is 77.35 out there. So how do I summarize this? I can't summarize it too much better than what I've already shared, which is you've got a consolidation and they're frustrated. There's no reason to sell when you're inside a consolidation. I guess lastly, what I can take a look at is this made a low, recent low back on December 13th. And when it made that low, 
the volume that was present was 4.6 million shares. We were down there about a week ago, and when we came down there, it was with 2 million shares. So 2 million shares came down and tested something that had uh, 4.6 million shares. So it's kind of suggesting to you that the selling has dried up and that you just have a consolidation. Now, I couldn't tell if Lori uh, had hung up or not. I don't hear her. So I hope that that answered your question with regard to uh, CRSP, CRISPR Therapeutics out there. And uh, thanks for the uh, call. In Miami, that's a city that I love. We love going down there. Man, what a place uh, What a place for uh, restaurants. Uh, all right, so we got Lori's question out of the way. Let me just go back to Lights Week Crude real quickly. Um, and just see what we've got there. Make sure that I took care of uh, of that. We we were looking really at the daily time frame, and again, that daily time frame was telling us that a close below the bottom of its bull structured profile should target its breakout level at 7062 on a weekly time frame. Consolidates with inside the weekly profile, but it looks like we will close the week below that red oscillator change line. That tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero, and that would suggest that it wants to go target 6973. So we have two price targets now. On a weekly basis, price is inside the buy zone. It's a bullish structured profile. So the buy zone is between 69.73 and 74.08. Really supports our conclusion of the daily time frame chart. And the monthly chart, really just to consolidate with inside its profile levels as well, its support level being down at 71.53. So we got 71.53, 70.62, 69.73. If we look to the intraday time period charts, Four lights we crewed. Let me get this one set up properly. A 30 minute time frame chart. We've got a TD9 count bottom. Perfect. So now we're going to be able to get a feel for what a rally does. If it fails, where would it fail at? So you got a beautiful TD9 count bottom. Assuming that price on a 30 minute basis can overcome that oscillator and change line, 72.70, it'll then have a little bit of resistance at 72.79, the center of its 30 minute somewhat bullish structured profile. Therefore, I would say two close above 72.79 will get us up to 73.79 to 74.29. 74.29 would be the place where you would, well, 73.79 to 74.29, that would be the area you'd consider shorting if that's what you're looking at doing out there. And a close above 74.29, at least on the 30 minute basis, says, hey, I've got more rally to give out there. So that's uh, what I see when I take a light sweet crude. I hope that that answered the question. And again, I forgot to write down who asked it. Otherwise, um, Otherwise, I would know exactly whether or not I answered the question or not. There is another question that came in. I'm struggling to hold on to that. There's a question that came, is, uh, came in from Nicholas during the breakout there. I was trying to set up a chart. He said, good morning, Stevie. Question. Oh, wait a minute here. Uh, okay. Uh, question. If the oscillator and change line is the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average, wouldn't it be generally close to the 29 EMA, or it just doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. But let me go show you that chart so you can see that visually. We're all visual learners out there. Great question. And what I can share with you is there is no simple exponential or any other kind of moving average that's going to get close to the oscillator and change line. The black digit right here would be your 28, uh, what were you at? Your 20, just your 29 period exponential moving average. The red and green line, you're familiar with that. That's the oscillator and change line. So yeah, there is not a single exponential moving average that even gets close to matching the oscillator and change line. So it's a it's a it's easy to understand, it's easy math um, out there and you can do those calculations uh, by your by yourself out there. All right, so let's go to um, Oh, but also Nicholas wrote back in. He said, hey, if you have more time, would you go take a look at American Tower, AMAT? And turns out that we do have more time. So let's go take a look at AMT. Let's get those charts fired up here. We'll use that same area where CRISPR was. And let's go take a look at AMAT. Um, and your question is, would you please go over if you get this on time? So we did and we will. Now we just got to let these charts here populate it. Sorry, it's taking just a few moments. Um, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, Pebble Beach. Got some golfers in the uh, group out here. I, I assume it, it. What you know? What a tremendous. Uh, now I think they're in for some pretty poor weather this weekend. So that should be pretty interesting to uh, see. I have played out there numerous times. I have played in winds. We used to play at Cypress Point. So my best friends. 
boss at the time was Joe Ford. Joe Ford is the still the vice chair of Augusta, to my knowledge. Uh, he's been the vice chair of Augusta for at least 30 years that I know of. But anyway, so we were able to play a number of great courses out there. And there's one day where we played, and I hit a pretty long ball. Um, and on their par three, is it 16, I think it is, a famous par three out there. We all we, we stood there, all of us, it was the uh, four of us. We stood there with drivers and tried to reach the green. It's a green that I normally uh, hit with a seven iron. And we could never get the ball all the way to the green. I saw a shot yesterday. I didn't really, I didn't have the sound down, but Tony Fino, he was uh, uh, targeting one of the par threes. I don't know if that was last week or if it was this week, whether it was uh, at uh, Torrey Pines or if it was at, uh, but he also hit a driver. And I think on a shot where he normally uses a sand wedge, possibly. So if they're in for some high winds, it's going to be quite an interesting tournament. So we got AMAT on our screens. We come back from this break. We'll stop talking about Pebble Beach and we'll take a look at AMAT. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're looking at applied materials. This is for Nicholas. Nicholas, uh, this has a wave number seven, letter G, uh, top out there. That uh, took place on January 25th, as well as a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. And what that's led to is a consolidation with inside his profile. Support is at 164.30, resistance at 172.76, a close today above. 
167.83 should lead to a move up to the 172.76 area. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, it's bullish. It's in a breakout bullish mode, as is the monthly time frame. We say breakout bullish because price is above all resistance, all resistance being the top of their profiles and their green oscillator and change lines out there. So AMAT, that is applied materials, looks like it wants to add higher. Uh, I'm starting to think that what we're in store for while we're in this unfavorable seasonal time period is maybe some type of consolidation out there. Maybe that's really the message of the markets based upon this week's data out here. Let's go take the others to 16. Thank you, Peter. That is a beauty of a hole. But try hitting the green from those back tees into a howling wind. It's almost impossible. We take a look at PayPal out there. I wish I could find that picture. I look like the green Michelin machine out there because the uh, the wind jacket that I had on there just blew up. Um, it's a pretty funny shot. But anyways, we want to take a look at uh, PayPal for Vic. And uh, Vic, we got a consolidation inside of PayPal here. It's got a wave number seven top that's led to a consolidation with inside its profile. Support is down at 5805, resistance up at 6350. Uh, right now, looks like price might want to target 62.94, and if it can overcome that, 63.50. The weekly time frame chart for PayPal, um, B point had 97 million. It was taken out with 114 million. There's an A to B equal CD pattern to the upside that has not completed, even though last week was a dark cloud cover candle and a uh, consolidation inside the uh, monthly time frame. That's between the range at 68.50, 68.65 is your resistance and 5551 is support and that's what we see when we take a look at paypal folks thanks so much for joining me today this week i'd love you to have a fabulous and a fantastic weekend i'll look forward to seeing you again on marvelous magnificent monday take care and be safe out there